Well, we've been making all week. Yep, we built projects this week inspired by the Toolbox Diva, including a pair of floating shelves that I built for my daughter's room. Yep, and I built a faux beam mantle for my living room. But before we get into those, it's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back to Make or Break, where we share our favorite maker videos of the week, and then we challenge ourselves to build one. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and this week we have cutting boards. A shop tour. A beautiful record display, and more. Let's get to it. Our first stop is with Zach Builds on YouTube. Zach has been sharing his love of making on Instagram for some time now, and this was his first shot at a play button. In the video, he walks us through making this absolutely beautiful mosaic cutting board. This project is a really cool vanity that Jen Woodhouse built for her daughter, and then she also shows us a super easy way to install drawer slides. As a pair of makers still figuring out our own workspace, we always love a good shop tour. And this week, David of Make Something takes us on a tour of his shop, which is a really creative conversion of a two-car garage that now works as his makerspace and studio. And finally, we swing over to Matt's backyard where he's using his hand-built sawmill to cut his beautiful walnut log into 37 thin slabs. Why so thin? Well, Matt laminates the slabs to plywood and using a miter fold blade from Rockler, he turns them into seamless boxes that are as thick as he wants. Genius, really. Over on Instagram, Hendrix Design shared a record display that features a really cool waveform cutout. We all can sympathize with Andy from Alpha Kilo Woodworking as he carefully glued up his miter joints and just held his breath hoping that they turned out. Jess over at Crow Creek Designs took a minute to talk about PPE and the importance of using it when working with chemicals and dust. We got a behind the scenes peek into Jeff Mack Design's giant labyrinth table build. Dang, he has some skills and not just in woodworking. All right, it's project time. This week we actually had two different projects that were inspired by Tamisha from Toolbox Divas. Yep, and here's how they turned out. Okay, so we just moved into a new house and my wife insists that the current decor is not nearly modern farmhouse enough. Well, she's right. And she really isn't a fan of the trim or the matching mantle over the red brick fireplace. So we looked to a video posted by Tamisha of the Toolbox Divas for inspiration. We knew not many of you would need a new mantle of your own, so we also tapped another video from Tamisha where she built these lovely floating shelves, which I happen to actually need for my daughter's room. Why don't you walk us through that first? Deal. This build really was simple. I started with a pre-milled piece of aspen and cut it down to a pair of 20 inch pieces, mainly so I could tap into two 16 on center studs if I wanted to. Tamisha used a pair of four inch angle brackets for hers, but I wanted mine to be more easily hidden. So I used two and a half inch versions. I also wanted to chisel out a groove in the back of each piece for the bracket so that the shelf would fit flush with the wall. Oh, that's clever. Thanks. It really was easy to do, and I like working with hand tools, so this was a win-win. After sanding, I stained them a light brown dye and screwed in the brackets. After that, I leveled them on the wall, screwed in the mounts with a little help from my taller person, and voila! And they look great! Yep, and my daughter loves them. She even chipped in when it came to decorating. Okay, I knew this floating mantle was going to be a big project at just over six feet, so Sarah was kind enough to help me out at every step. Now my wife wanted the beam to look rough sawn and as light as possible to contrast against her newly painted black bricks. So we started by choosing three 1x12 boards of pine and brought them back to the shop to cut them down. These long boards need to be cut at a 45 degree angle for the miter joints, so we had to use our table saw. We just got the saw from Milwaukee a week ago and so far it's been really easy to use and cutting at a 45 degree miter was fairly straightforward. After our boards were cut, Sarah and I worked together to glue up and hold the pieces in place while we used a brad nailer to finish the joint. Our joints weren't perfect, so we used a bit of wood filler and then a light sanding with 80 grit paper to blend our corners and sand the surface down a bit while still making it look and feel rough sawn as per our client's instruction. And this worked pretty well. After that we applied a water-based finish because an oil-based one would have brought out the yellow in the wood which we didn't want. After that, it was as simple as sliding the new mantle over the old one and screwing it into place. We asked you guys to build along with us, and once again, Wally Knott built a floating shelf of his own, which he says he plans to duplicate throughout his entire house. Congrats, bud! We'll be sending you some heart tools as a surprise. All right. We are both happy with our floating shelves, but what are we gonna build this week? So glad that you asked. Now, I wanted to build a bench, so I went looking for a simple two by four design and found one from Mike at Modern Builds. Now, this one is actually one of his early videos from 2016, but it looks great, so I wanna build it. 
All right, are you gonna have that as an indoor bench or as an outdoor bench? Uh, outdoor for sure. So okay. I have a huge deck and very little sitting space. So this should do the trick. All right, awesome. So guys, remember, if you choose to build a bench with us this week, just post a photo to Instagram and use the hashtag make or break. And you could win some power tools from our sponsor, Heart. All right, break's over. Let's go make something.